Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and in this tutorial I will show you how to customize my fly-through digital network opener After Effects template. Please be aware that this is not a how-to tutorial, so you will not learn how to create this effect, you will only learn how to use this template. If you want to learn how to create such an effect, then you can jump over to my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com and in this section you will find a lot of Stardust tutorials, but also other After Effects tutorials, they are all free to watch. If you are a beginner in After Effects, I would recommend that you also check out the After Effects course. This is a free After Effects basic course for all beginners. Okay, but now let's start with this customization of the template. Before we start in After Effects, I want to show you the content of this template. After you downloaded the file from VideoHive and you open up the folder, you see that there are actually four different After Effects projects included. The names are already pretty self-explanatory, but let me tell you what we've got here. So first of all, we have two different resolutions. So we have two projects in 4K Ultra HD resolution, and we have two projects in standard Full HD resolution. The difference between these projects is the use of plugins. All of these projects require Superluminal Stardust plugin. So you will need Stardust to use this template. This project here, additionally requires video copilot's optical flares and this one as well. So the OF here stands for optical flares and the SD for Stardust. So these two projects require optical flares and Stardust installed on your system. The other projects do not require optical flares. So if you do not have optical flares, you can use one of these projects here. The only difference between these two projects is that the flares in this project are pre-rendered and here they are just created originally with the plugin. Okay, now we'll open up one of my files here. And for this tutorial, I will just use the 4K optical flares and Stardust version. After Effects now tells me that this project must be converted. Don't worry, this is no problem. That only means that it was created with an older version of After Effects uh, as you are using it right now. So just click OK and everything will update and everything will work. In the first part of this tutorial, I will show you a quick customization. So I will show you how to add your logo, how to change the keywords, how to add footage to the placeholders and how to edit the tagline and the colors of this template. Later on, I will show you a bit more of in-depth customization and we will create a completely different look and I will show you the possibilities of this very versatile template. Okay, let's get started by importing a logo. Move to the logo composition. If it's not already open in the timeline right here, you can open it up here in the project area by just double clicking on this composition and then you can import your file, go to import and select file. In my case, I will use the Envato logo as an example. Now let's drag our logo on top of the placeholder. The placeholder is just a text layer. So if you want to use only a title, only some text, then you can use this layer and just double click and edit your title. If you want to use a logo, then just drag it on top and disable or delete the placeholder. Now let's take a look whether this is placed correctly and I think it's quite good. Maybe it's a little bit too big, so I will scale it down just a little bit. Okay, if we go to the render comp now and move our time indicator here to the end of the animation, you see that now my Envato logo is visible right here. The next step is to edit the keywords. If you take a look here, let me increase the resolution a bit. The keywords are placed all over our digital network and you can customize them in one composition and this is right here. And you see we have 15 keywords as a standard. You can of course also change this and I will show you this later in the in-depth customization. Right now I will just show you how to change the keywords. So you can come in here and then just double click a layer and enter your title. So let's enter a new title. You can of course use another font and you can of course change the look of your keywords using all the character settings right here. To enter a second keyword, just move your cursor, your time indicator, one frame forward, select the next keyword and then just double click and enter your keyword. If the composition is too small or your keywords are too long, you can either change the size of the font or you can also come in here to the composition settings and change the resolution of this composition. This is also possible. 
Okay, so you have 15 keywords here and if you edited all these keywords, then all of them will be distributed randomly in our scene here. The next step in the standard customization is to add some images. You see that in the footage pre-comp, we have 15 placeholders and inside these placeholders, you can add your images. Right now, there are just two placeholder layers in there. So to add images to this template, again, go to file, go to import file and move to the folder where your images are located. Now I will select the first image and drag it on top of my placeholders and scale it down so that it matches my composition approximately like so. Now I can move to the next placeholder, placeholder number two, open it up, drag in the second one here, scale it down. And let's do one more for this customization tutorial. Again, move the cursor, double click and drag in the third image that we have got. Uh, please be aware that this template only works with images and it will not work to, to play videos inside these placeholders because they are actually only one frame long. And this is due to the particle setup. So we only use one frame to display these images. And if we go to the render composition now and we take a look here at our grid, you see already that my, my images are already inside here. And if you fill up all these 15 placeholders, then of course all these placeholders will show an image. You can also change the number of these placeholders, but again, I will show you this in the in-depth customization a little bit later. Now, the next step is to change the colors of this layout. First of all, you can change some colors in the color setup layer right on top of the timeline in the render composition. You see you have a bunch of color controls here, and actually these are the color controls for the background layer and for all the lights, the flares. So if you change this here, maybe we want to make it, don't know, a little bit bluer, more saturated blue here, like so. Let me move quickly to the end of the animation to see the logo. Yeah, that looks quite nice with the green of the Envato logo. And now we could change the light. So maybe let's change the red light to something like green to match the logo. And therefore I just use my color picker and feature a color here maybe one of these colors here and then I will just duplicate this by featuring these two colors here and you see that the color of my flares changed and this is also possible with the version that does not require optical flares so you can change the color of the flares no matter whether you have optical flares or not okay so the next step is to change the color of our network and to change the color of our network we have to dive into the settings of our stardust layer so let's select the stardust layer right here and let's make sure that the stardust panel is active or visible in your screen layout and to do that you can go to window and then you just choose this stardust panel right here and activate it let me quickly shift this a bit To change the color of the particles, we simply select the particle nodes here. First of all, we will change the color of the grid. So we will select the particles that are linked to the grid emitters. And here in our effect controls panel, we now open up the particle properties. And here we open up the color gradient because actually all these colors are controlled by a gradient. Now I can just change this to a green again to match the logo a bit better something like that maybe okay and you will see that immediately my particles will update you can of course change all these colors create your own gradients you can of course also choose one of the presets let me show this quickly there are presets that are included and in stardust that you can use one more hint if you use the color picker here to feature a color, I experienced some crashes in an older version of After Effects. So if you use After Effects CC 2012, the first version of After Effects CC, and you use the color picker here or the eyedropper tool inside this Stardust gradient, it can happen that it crashes. It doesn't happen in the later version, so I can simply use it right here. You see it, it, it's no problem in the latest version of After Effects, but in After Effects CC 2012, I'm already in contact with the developers of Stardust, so maybe this problem will be solved with the next update. 
Okay, so for now what we can do is we can take this gradient and copy it. So simply press copy and move on to the next particle node, which is the second grid emitter here, and new particle node, open up the properties, and again open up the gradient and just paste it in. Let's do the same here for these moving particles, move on to the next node, and again exactly the same, properties, gradient, paste, next particle node, properties, gradient, and paste. And now we can do it also with our keywords here. So particle, this node here, right here, particle properties, gradient, and paste. And now you see that we changed the look of this project and that we have a nice greenish touch here that matches our logo. Okay, so this is the standard customization. Uh, one more thing to do is to customize the tagline. That's pretty simple. So just select the tagline layer right here. Make sure that your time indicator is somewhere around 16 seconds so that you can see it. Now you can double click and enter your title. You can of course change the font and whatever you want. And you can of course change the position by simply selecting this layer and dragging it around. Maybe something like that. The next step or the last step would be to add some audio. You can either enter your audio in the audio composition, just import your audio file and drag it into the audio composition. You can of course also just drag it directly into the render composition. If you want to use the same audio that I used in the preview, then you will find the link in the links folder here. Right here, this is the link that will lead you to Audio Jungle to exactly the same audio file that I used in the preview video. Okay, so this is it for a quick and standard easy customization. Now I will show you how to create a little bit of a more in-depth customization and how versatile this template really is. And therefore I will just create another version. For this version I will import another logo. So I will make this a little bit faster now. And I will move to my logo composition, drag in the new logo turn off the old one and I will scale this down because this is way too big. So maybe something like 70. Okay. And now we'll show you how to change the amount of keywords. If you want to reduce the amount of keywords, that's pretty simple. Maybe you only want to use the first five keywords. So select keyword number five and then just bring in the work area to keyword to the end of keyword number five, right click and say trim comp to work area. And then if you go to the render composition and take a look at our network, you will see that now only keywords number one to five are used. You will not see any keywords with higher numbers here. So the opposite, if you want to have more keywords, let me just undo the changes that I made. Now we have all keywords uh, visible here again. If you want to use more, then you have to change the composition settings, go to the composition settings inside the keyword composition and change the duration to a number of how many keywords you want to use. So if you want to use 20 different keywords, then just put in 20 here instead of 15. And now you see, I can just duplicate the last five here, control D and drag them down and drag them over. Make sure that each of these layers covers one frame in the composition. And now you have five additional placeholders for keywords that you can use in this project. I will show you the same now for the footage. Uh, reducing the number is exactly the same. You just select how many you want, you bring in the work area and you trim the comp to the work area. If you want to add placeholders, if you want to use more than 15 images, uh, you have to do the following. Again, you have to change the composition settings. So open this up and again, change the duration to the number of images you want to use. So maybe you want to use 20 images but now it's not enough to just duplicate the placeholders here because otherwise you will just duplicate a placeholder that references the same image and it will just repeat. You need to create new placeholders. And to create new placeholders, you can open up this footage placeholders folder right here. You see we have all the placeholders accessible right here and we can now duplicate it here. So let's select the last five here and let's press Ctrl D and now I created five additional placeholders. Now I will drag them uh, on bottom of my composition and now just make sure that each of these layers of composition sits on one frame. So let's sequence them like so. 
And now you can add up to 20 images to this project. Now inside the render comp, if we take a look now, I'm using a dark logo. So with this dark logo, let me just quickly shift my tagline. Uh, with a dark logo, it doesn't look that good uh, anymore because it's dark background, dark logo. So we have to create a bright background now. To create a bright background, you simply select the color setup and now we can feature a color here. Maybe I will feature one of these logo colors here. It could look quite cool. And now I will make it just a little bit warmer, something like that. Okay, that looks really quite cool. And now I will just change the second background color to something maybe a little bit of this, a little bit darker. Let me take a look how this looks. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. Maybe it's a bit too saturated and a bit too bright. And I think that this looks pretty good. But if we take a look now at our grid, you see that now our grid is kind of transparent and you cannot see it anymore. And to correct this, we have to change a few settings. So first of all, let me change the setting of my Stardust layer. And if I press F4, you see that this is set to Add. And I will change this from Add now to Normal. This is the first step that you can do. And what we can do now is we go into our Particle properties again. So select the Particle nodes again. And you see in the Particle nodes, we have this option to change the Transfer mode. So let's set this to Normal now. And I will do this for all the Particle nodes that we have. Just change all of this from Add to Normal. And the keywords, particles to Normal. And the image particles, actually, these are the image particles. We can leave these at screen. I think that they, they are set to screen. So you can leave this at screen. You could also change it to normal. It doesn't make that much of a difference. And now we can change the colors because the colors are quite bright. But if I change these now to, to darker colors, then this will look really cool. So let me select again the particles here. And instead of this white here, I will just select a black or a very dark color, something like that. And now we will just darken all the other colors as well. So let's just use this green here, pretty dark one, and maybe the blue a little bit darker, not so dark. And I think that this already looks pretty cool. Now I just copy this gradient here and I move on to my other particle nodes. And again, I will paste in this gradient to all of these nodes. Okay, now you see that I created a dark version of my grid. And if we take a look here, it looks quite good, but it looks a little bit strange. And why is that? And this is because we also have a glow effect on this layer. So let's just move down uh, in the effect controls panel. And you see here is the glow and just turn this off. Because of course, if we are using a bright setup with a bright background, we do not need any glow. And this is it. Now you created a really cool looking bright version of our template. And now you can use it with dark logos as well. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a mail either through my website or my video have profile. You can, of course, also put it in the comments. I hope that you like this template, that you create some awesome openers with it. Thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.